So by way of introduction, I have a very special uh, guest today. And Nandita Shah is a medical doctor specializing in homeopathy from CMP Homeopathic Medical College in Mumbai. She has been practicing since 1981 as an Indian homeopath, doctor and author. She also founded the Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature, which is Sharan in 2005, and was one of four women from Tamil Nadu who received in 2016 the Nari Shakti Presidential Award from uh, the President of India, Pranab Mukherjee, for outstanding innovation in healthcare, reversing over 20,000 diabetes conditions, even in 2016. Nandita, thank you so much for your important work, which is truly an inspiration for us, including with Ubuntu's Diabetes Challenge. And maybe I can start this interview with the, this question. So, uh, how did Sharan come about? Uh, also being the sanctuary for healing and reconnection to animals and nature. And that sounds very significant if you can speak about that. And also, where did your passion for the vegan lifestyle all begin for you? Okay, those are two questions. And Sharon started in 2005. And that's because, you know, as a doctor practicing, I realized that in general, medicines never cure. But the body always works to heal, provided we give the right inputs. Most of us are giving the wrong input because we are eating and living the way we've been taught to by our culture, society and advertisements. But we should eat what nature or God designed for us to eat. For example, if you go to a farm or an orchard and you see fruits and vegetables, instinctively we feel like picking and eating them. Every animal eats according to instinct. If you see green fields of wheat and rice growing, our mouth doesn't water. That's because we can't eat it raw. Every animal eats their food raw. If you see a chicken walk by or a goat or a cow or a pig or a lamb, your mouth doesn't water. This is not our food, but we've been taught that we are omnivores. And so we've been eating these foods, but it's not our food. And that's why when we put the wrong food in our body, we get sick. Now, you may know that milk, Milk and meat have the same properties, high protein, high fat and no fiber, which is why vegetarians and non-vegetarians get the same diseases. That's why we always recommend a plant-based diet. Also, all animals in nature eat their food raw and whole. We don't expect everyone to eat their food raw because it's too far from what they're used to. But we do want everyone to eat food as whole as possible. And finally, we're the only species that sprays our food with poison so that other animals don't eat it. And then we eat it. Isn't that crazy? So we always ask people to eat organic. If you eat organic, whole plant-based foods and live according to a natural lifestyle, which means you know, sleep at the right, rest, right time and proper rest and fresh air and plenty of water and sunshine and exercise and so on. If you lead a healthy lifestyle, you will naturally be healthy and you can heal most diseases. So uh, this is how Sharon came about. You know, I was practicing and I saw my patients were getting well, but medicines never cure. And so they would be either on medicines their entire life or with homeopathy, they would have some medicines, but still come back with the same problem after three months or three years. And so we were in the same position. But since the body heals, if we take away the causes, and that's what's even been written in the organ on a medicine, that if we take away the causes, body will heal. And that's all I'm doing. And, you know, uh, with diabetes, you, we know very well that patients with diabetes never get cured with medicines. They're told not to have sugar or carbohydrates. But sugar and carbohydrates are not the cause of diabetes. High blood sugar is the result of diabetes. The cause of diabetes is insulin resistance. And if we want to get rid of diabetes permanently, 
so that blood reports are normal and no more medicines, then we have to work at the level of insulin resistance. And that's what we do now. So that was one question. And the other question? So the other question was about your personal passion with uh, the vegan lifestyle. Right. So I actually started uh, as a vegetarian. All my life I was a vegetarian. And I was so happy to be a vegetarian because I thought it was the most compassionate lifestyle and I thought it was really healthy. But then I found out that in order for us to consume dairy, cows had to be artificially inseminated, made pregnant. Their babies were taken away from them forcefully and their milk was sold in the market. When I found out about that, I had to change my lifestyle. And when I changed my lifestyle, I started seeing that uh, you know, I started seeing all the articles in medical journals and elsewhere about how milk actually causes damage. And I do remember that in no medical textbook is it written that milk is good for you. So I started seeing articles about how the countries with the highest consumption of dairy had the highest incidence of osteoporosis. And so that broke all the myths about milk is required for calcium and so on. And so I started reading more and more and more and I experienced a huge difference in my own, not just uh, physical state, but state of mind. And, you know, in homeopathy, we always consider mind and body together, but we know that everywhere. If you're stressed, you can get diabetes or other diseases, heart attack or hypertension and so on. And so this big change in the state of body and mind inspired me to explain this to my patients and my patients understood it they were very excited but they didn't change they found it very difficult to change and then i started seeing patients who were really doctors had given up on them they had no other hope and so they had one foot in the grave. And so I started telling them about what they could do. And they started following. And I saw miraculous results in the patients that nobody expected to get better. And so uh, that's where I started. I realized that the normal patients, the patients with just simple diseases like asthma or stomach ache or all these things, they couldn't follow that was because they uh, they felt that they would be deprived if they stopped eating meat and milk and all those things so i started having seminars uh, workshops a day long workshop i would serve breakfast and lunch and uh, and uh, snacks in the evening which was filling so that they didn't need dinner and my patients saw that it wasn't a deprivation. In fact, it was a celebration. And so that's how I started, you know, getting even patients with uh, simple complaints get better. And of course, now I treat patients all the way from diabetes up to cancer with plant-based diet. Mm, that's amazing. So, so clearly whole food plant-based and vegan diets can reverse diseases, not only diabetes, but as you say, all the way, heart disease and lifestyle disease up to cancer. Uh, you, you alluded to it, but can you develop a little bit this idea of what is the science behind the mechanism by which all of those diseases can be healed by such a solution, such a diet based solution? You know, every animal is supposed to eat certain foods, right? And we're eating foods that are not meant for our species. But if we start eating what nature or God designed for us to eat, automatically we are going to have health. So that's all, you know, basically, I'm just explaining to people how to eat, what to eat, and how to make it really delicious. Because if it's not delicious, it won't be sustainable. So that's all. Um, does that answer your question, though? Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, Silesh Rao was speaking at, at the COP26 uh, Ahimsa Environment um, Conference last week and he said continuing the trajectory we're going 
at, you know the current food system of of the planet is just bringing you know disease death and destruction disease for humans death for the animals destruction for the climate and the planet and and you know that's sort of like where sharan came from sharan stands for sanctuary for health and reconnection to animals and nature and i used to live in bombay and you know in cities like bombay we are totally disconnected from nature but when i moved to oroville i started seeing that animals in nature know how to be well they know just what to do and they know that they should fast if they are not feeling well etc but we don't so i realized that the reason we're so sick is because we're disconnected from nature we listen to you know what we've been taught rather than what we should know and you know all of us all the species on the planet are interconnected all the humans on the planet are interconnected and what shailesh rao says and what other people say is very true that if we continue to eat animals then we're eating higher on the food chain we're raising all these animals for food they take up land water and resources of food themselves and so we are creating a climate disaster and we are destroying ourselves we are creating extinction amongst animals because we are uh, cutting down forests their habitat so that we can raise food to feed animals in our food chain and then we eat those animals and uh, so all of this is causing the situation that we are in right now and we can change this just by changing what we put on our plates right right yeah we we um i mean if 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 uh, so cop cop 26 is now underway they are discussing these issues they're not you know agreeing on the solutions as governments um you know clearly food and diet is and should be uh, at the heart of the climate solutions for all those reasons what what agreements would you nandita like uh, like to see world leaders sign on to right now if they could that would promote global healing at an individual level but also with this reconnection to animals and the environment well i recently we've had the covid pandemic and if we think about the covid pandemic i think that vaccinations is not a solution the solution to the pandemic is getting to the level of cause and the cause was a wet market and so if we stop eating animals we can not only stop future pandemics because many of the pandemics have come from animals that have come too close to us and animals spread it to each other like bird flu and swine flu and now we have this pandemic and it will only get worse we know about ebola which came from monkeys and so on so it'll only get worse so if we stop intruding in their territory and if we take them off our plates then we are going to get rid of future ep- epidemics so at least lessen them we are going to reverse climate change and so you know if if some um some plans could be made or some some guidelines could be given i really think the first thing that needs to change is what we put on our plates right and so i wish that uh they would do that and we all know that they're serving meat at a eco conference so i don't know what will happen but what i see is that the, if we go on this way there's no future for our planet and future generations right, right and and there was some research that came out i think it was from six countries and published in the british medical journal looking at i think it was about 2 or 3000 healthcare workers exposed to covid following plant based diets versus other diets and they found up to 73 percent uh, protection moving from mild to severe covid with those healthcare workers following the plant based diets as as, as against uh, you know the meat diets which were would increase and amplify the risk 
True and you know we have been treating lots of patients with COVID through the pandemic and we treat them and, and you know all the patients that have come to us are our own patients anyway most of them. So they are already plant based and we have been treating them without any medicines and we haven't lost a single patient even when there were so many patients in hospital and so many patients losing lives. So what I can say for sure is that you know, not only will we improve health, but we improve the possibility for a future on this planet for not just human beings, but for all animals as well. So that's amazing to hear that uh, with your patients and, and those results. I mean, w could we go as far as to say that a whole food, plant based, low oil, zero oil uh, diet is, is akin to a green vaccine? Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yes, it would definitely be equivalent to a green vaccine. I'm, and, and it's green in every way, you know, not only for human health, because vaccines themselves have side effects that, that are awful. And I've had uh, Guillain-Barre, which is one of the side effects of both COVID and the vaccination. Uh, obviously, I haven't taken the COVID vaccination, but I had it in the past due to a rabies vaccination and I can surely tell you that like we should think a lot more before allowing vaccines to be used this way that they're being used right now. Yeah, these are very important points. Um, so so on, on your 20, why did you choose a 21 day program for Sharon's diabetes reversal? Okay, so um, the reason we chose a 21 day program is because we do uh, all the lab tests at the beginning and all the lab tests at the end and we kind of need 21 days in order to reverse diseases So and, and to have a change in the lab reports as well. But the real reason we chose 21 days is because it takes 21 days to change a habit and we need to help people change a habit in the shortest time possible because not everyone can stay with us for less than I mean for more than 21 days but I just came back from our 21 day retreat which was um, this time in October and we had 24 participants and one of them came in on 20 medications and went out on less than four I think he's even dropped one of the four that he was still on now so you know we get such amazing results with people just by changing their diet and helping them heal and you know making it fun and making it delicious and it takes 21 days to change a habit and i'm so happy to say that all of them are on track now well we've certainly been experiencing that um, following your protocol giving people access to your online 21 day program your book um, our new recipe book with like local African recipes and our kind of support and motivation and we've we've enrolled uh, six people and three of them reversed their diabetes medication completely and the other three was a 25 a 15 and 75 percent off during the 21 days of which one the 75 percent I think the doctor was just being cautious she's actually a type 1 diabetic so is it possible to reverse type 1 diabetes so it all depends on the kind of type 1 diabetes and you know I'm learning along the way because it takes a long time to reverse type 1 diabetes and we have several patients that we are watching but here's the thing that I know for sure that it's always possible to reduce their insulin dosage. Now whether it's reversible or not really depends on the cause of the type 1 diabetes for example, someone born without a pancreas cannot reverse type 1 diabetes. But someone whose pancreas has been destroyed because of certain other reasons, could be medicines or viral infections, or even, you know, there's a new set of drugs called sulfonylureas. They're not that new, but glimepiride, glycoside, these force the pancreas to produce more insulin and finally cause a burnout of the pancreas and at least here in India doctors are uh, recommending them left right and center so the patient feels good right away and after a few years his pancreas is burnt out 
and he does not produce insulin anymore and then the doctor just puts them on insulin. So uh, it depends on what is the cause of the diabetes, whether it is reversible or not. But definitely, as a child or a, or an adult, would impact that as well. Yeah, that that too. It so it's there are various causes. How long they've had it, and all these things make a huge difference. You know, people often uh, critics, I guess, of whole food, plant based, often. Like a common question is, where do you get your, your protein from? This kind of protein question. So, I mean, vegans can get enough nutrition generally from food and, and particularly uh, protein is adequate. Oh, well, you know, uh, think about protein. Where do horses get it from? Where do cows get it from? Where do elephants get it from? In fact, plants are the only true source of protein. Only plants can manufacture protein from the air and the nitrogen in the soil and the water every other protein is a secondary protein so animals get their proteins from plants and we can also get it from plants and anyhow we are actually herbivores right i mean if you look at our teeth we don't have the teeth that could pounce on an animal tear it apart and eat it raw no if we eat animal products we have to kill the animal, take off the skin, take out the bones, hack it with a knife, cook it and then usually we dress it with plant products like onions and garlic and ketchup and mustard and so on to make it even palatable to our species. Right. That's true. So it's not our food, you know. That's, that's how if we eat wrong food it's like putting diesel in a car that runs on petrol it won't work or it's like giving a cow meat or a lion grass it doesn't work and if we eat the right fuel i can say for myself it's years and years that i haven't got sick not even a fever and hardly a cold because i'm always looking after my health you know and also enjoying delicious food along the way. And, and that had been different earlier. Um, I, I did read in your book that you had some personal health challenges that were, were you know, part of your journey to, to embrace whole food plant-based. Can you speak a little bit about your, just your personal, uh, just briefly about your personal journey, healing journey? Yeah, I suffered from Guillain-Barre, which is an autoimmune disease. Actually, I suffered from various diseases along the way. I had malaria once and I had pneumonia once and anyhow, but the, the cherry on the cake was the Guillain-Barre, which was, is an autoimmune disease. And <clears throat> thanks to that, it, it's, a, it's an acute autoimmune disease and thanks to that, I was completely paralyzed from head to foot. I couldn't even turn in bed. And being a doctor, I knew that I didn't want to hospitalize myself because um, you know, they, at that time they would give steroids and immunoglobulins and I knew the effect of that on our body. And so I decided to stay at home and have two helpers who would, you know, feed me and help me with bodily functions and who would, um, uh, you know, um, turn me in the bed. They would do everything. I couldn't even turn in bed. And this took me... It took me about six months to get on a wheelchair from all that. But I knew that if I was doing the right thing, my body would heal. And that's all I did. I worked on getting my body to heal. Right, right. And then, and then you understood the power of food as medicine through your... I understood not just the power of food as medicine, but a lot more beyond food like mind and body and and the main reason that i'm so happy with plant-based diet is because it helps change the mind you know like for example when we are stressed we produce adrenaline when animals are stressed they produce adrenaline when we consume animal products we're consuming their despair and hopelessness and fear and so so many people are suffering from depression and and fear and anxiety and these are all man-made problems because if we eat the food that we're meant to eat automatically we can be healthy
even in mine. You know, actually, me uh, mental diseases or psychiatric diseases are even more debilitating than physical diseases. So this is a very interesting topic because we're talking about body-mind, we're talking about reconnection with nature and animals who we've been consuming, you know, in spite of their fear and their anxiety and horror through that process. And, and we're, we're taking that in and it's having an effect on us, on our endocrine system, on our emotions, on our, maybe even our mind and our spirit. So that takes a new way of thinking of animals more as being our companions or our healers than being our products and our, our possession. True, and you know, animals are so amazing that they know how to heal. Where If they are left in nature, they will heal themselves. And we are not stupider than they are, right? But we're just disconnected from our instincts because we're disconnected from nature. If we can reconnect to our instincts, healing is... It's hard to miss healing. And so, you know, many of the people who've been following our lifestyle, uh, which is whole, plant-based and organic, after some time, they automatically tend to leave out the grains and go in for more raw. And some of them are completely raw. And that's just because this is instinctive. You know, we go back to our instincts and automatically we feel so much better, lighter, happier, and more energetic. And, and more connected to the environment, animals, nature, and, and, and probably on the spiritual level as well. So, I mean, to get there though, um, to get back to our nature, support is essential. Practical support is, you know, learning the theory is one thing, but learning how to prepare food is something else very important so how how important do you find that practical food support preparation chef training you know whether it's for someone coming on your program as a patient or a doctor who hasn't really learned plant-based or or how to prepare healing foods how important is that i think it's the most important thing because if you know if someone doesn't like their food this is not a sustainable lifestyle and we have to remember that the foods that we are trying to get away from, which is maybe the tea and the coffee and the animal products and the sugars and the oils and all of that are addictive. So if we don't make our food really amazing, then, then it's a little bit difficult. And I do want to say that it's so easy to make delicious food like anytime you want to learn something new, you have to spend some time learning it. But once you learn it, it's really easy. It's just, it's child's play. Hmm. Absolutely. And also, I, 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 we saw in, in America, I think it was Wayne University uh, Medical College being the first um, medical curriculum that mandates the doctors in training to learn about plant-based and also to go to the kitchen and learn how to prepare it. So this is very exciting. In fact, you know, I had gone to Italy and I was in Milan and there's this um, cancer institute, Instituto di... Forgot, I forgot the name, but it's anyway, it's the cancer institute in um, Milan and they gave a whole uh, building to Dr. Berini, who was working with cancer patients just through food. And part of the building was a kitchen, a big kitchen, so that he could prepare food to heal. Isn't that amazing? Like this has been happening in different countries over years. I, I mean, I just gave one example, but it's happening all over the world. And so many people are healing, but most of the people right now don't know about this important information. That's so important. Um, we, we were are in touch with the office of the New York City Mayor, Eric Adams. I'm not sure if you know of him, but he reversed his diabetes when he was the mayor of Brooklyn. And I was the, just coming in as the mayor of New York. He saved his blindness in one eye. And he, he wrote a book uh, following the whole food plant based. And he, this can be uh, read about in his book that came out, Healthy at Last, where he's sort of in the kitchen. And he's, anyway, now as a mayor of New York, he's preparing something amazing, which is to kind of roll out these local government 
clinics to support lifestyle disease reversal for the constituents of, of, of New York through these structured programs. That's in the pipeline. You know, it's, a, it's, it's so amazing. I mean, yeah, in light of your experience, what advice would you have for, let's say, governments around the world who would be inspired by that and want to implement similar programs? Uh, what is Sharon's vision for, uh, for more connecting worldwide through programs like that? I don't know what to say here because truthfully, it's all about money in most places, right? We've been training so many doctors and we've done talks in hospitals and all of that, but there's no money in health. The money is in sickness. And so it's really hard for most doctors to switch over. And I know that, you know, we have consultations and our consultations are generally more expensive than a regular doctor's consultation, but we spend much more time. And after a few consultations with us, the patient will never need to see a doctor again. Now, it sounds a little expensive, but it's not expensive in the long term. But most of the doctors can't afford to be on our team because they're earning far more outside of our team than they could ever earn on our team because we can't raise the price of our consultations that much. So, you know, this whole thing is about money. And I think that the reason the earth is where it is right now is because of commercialism. You know, people are trying to sell things and the whole emphasis is on buy more, buy more, waste more, buy more. And uh, unfortunately, governments get their money from that. So uh, I don't know. I'm not that, that optimistic. But let's see what happens. Mm, I hear you. And, and of course, the reward system in the sickness industry is, is there. And that we need to transform that. I mean, we're trying to be optimistic here. We began our Ubuntu Wellness Challenge with the leader in our province, Alan, Premier Alan Wendy. You wrote a very nice personal uh, note to him at the start of this about over a year ago. And he did reverse his diabetes um, on day 18 of the program uh, with his four medications or six medications. And now he just, uh, in his personal capacity, not as the leader of the official opposition of South Africa, he signed on this week to the Global Plant-Based Treaty as well, which is you know, a, a kind of binding treaty for people to commit to planting more trees, eating more plants. So I guess as, uh, and he'll be here for this World Diabetes Day event this Sunday, we would love to um, do a little promo screening of our movie. Maybe we can in time have a little clip from this interview brought in is there any little congratulation or, or note of advice for Alan that you could just say to Alan now something, we could maybe use that? Because he did follow the program and he, he, he enjoyed being on a, as you said, a vegan, no oil at all diet. <laughs> it was quite a challenge and he rose to it and it really worked for him. So we hope that sort of public leader position can help take things forward for a broader audience as well. So here's a message for Premier Allen, who has followed this plan and who has reversed diabetes. Congratulations on all you've done. And I really hope that you will be able to spread it to many others because, you know, they're all looking up to you and surely we can make a huge difference together. And then um, just to let you know that yesterday we met with the Indian Consul General in Cape Town and introduced our project for the first time, the Ubuntu Wellness Diabetes Reversal Challenge, as well as your work as Dr. Nandita and Sharon. There was interest expressed and would you potentially be open to visiting South Africa at some point in the future um, when the gap in your busy schedule, you know, to share your expertise possibly training, food as medicine, if your country's government would support this kind of India-Africa Ubuntu partnership. Absolutely. If we plan it well in advance. That's wonderful. You're on camera. 
That's great. <laughs> and then finally, I mean, would you have any special advice or tips or like a like, you know a takeaway for anyone any diabetic sufferer considering doing the program from your experience? Just something to maybe motivate or support them. Just do it. It's really simple, and Ubuntu is helping you do it. So just don't think about it. Do it. Try it. Okay. You know, the very worst you can lose, try it for 30 days. The very worst you can lose is, you know, that it doesn't work and you're back to your normal diet. But that never happens. So, you know, why not try it for 30 days and find out? Dr. Nandita, thank you so much for your time. I think uh, we've had a, a very constructive and, and profound interview with you. And if there's anything I missed out, would you, would you um, like to add anything finally from your side? Any, anything to share? I don't know what you got out there, so I don't know what you need. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we would love you um, to maybe have a look at the book that we've just uh, created, the recipe book. We um, thank you in it as well uh, for, for the support and partnership uh, through, through this process, the inspiration. We also incorporated that wonderful image of Dr. Emoto's water crystal and connecting, connecting with water and vibration and healing. And... So I, my final message is that I am really appreciative of all the work that you have put in to spread this knowledge in Africa, South Africa. And I really hope that it will go beyond just South Africa to all of Africa and all of the world. And, you know, I believe that every single person who does it is just uh, an instrument to reach many, many more people. And so... If you do it, you will spread it to so many more and there is a chance for this planet. Well, I can tell you that is what we want to do. Um, I, we feel Ubuntu Wellness is very closely aligned with Sharon's uh, goals and mission. Uh, my wife Dawn, um, and, uh, who's my inspiration and, and been following the, the whole food and vegan nutrition philosophy for some decades now, we would like to commit to doing your Sharan training in January, the 11 day training. If it's not too late, we, we would like to be further uh, um, upskilled by you and your process as well. So we should end this. Um, yes, I yes. think we're there. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much, Nandita. We can do that again. And <laughs> <laughs> so don't think about it. Just do it. Just eat the plants. That was great. Uh, Dr. Nandita is really one of the global leaders in the space and she's really supporting the work of Ubuntu to make a difference in the lives of many people suffering from diabetes and other lifestyle diseases in South Africa and I'm sure uh, broader throughout the continent of Africa. We'll be drawing on her knowledge and, and her genius a lot more in future. So watch this space for India-South Africa partnership. Namaste.